Welcome everybody to episode 91. Wow, it has been a long journey, and if you've been following along from the beginning, awesome. But I imagine many of you are just jumping in because we're starting a new topic, as you may have assumed from the title. However, we're going to use some of the code that we've used from earlier videos, so I'll show you how to get that code if you're just jumping in. We're going to be spending most likely the next 10 episodes on Material UI. This is a library that gives us many components that we can use to make pretty websites. So this section is going to be about styling our applications. Now this is different than what we've done earlier on in the series. We've talked about some CSS stuff and we've talked about Tailwind CSS. This is a fabulous tool, but one of the challenges is whenever you design something, you end up adding a bunch of classes to your HTML and it pollutes the code with a lot of these classes. Well, with Material UI, instead we have custom components that we can just import and use. So for example, if you use the Material UI button, it's just automatically going to look a certain way, which makes it very handy to keep our code thin and it makes it very easy to make good looking websites. Now there's nothing wrong with Tailwind CSS or all these other different CSS libraries. We're just trying to learn something new and I think this is a valuable tool to add to our tool belt. So you can find Material UI at MUI.com and there's a few different things in here. The specific thing we want to look at is under Docs, MUI Core, and then Material UI. This is free for everybody to use. There are some paid options out there so if you go back to the home page, you can explore those. However, this is what we want, and we want to learn how to install this into our application. Now, you have two options. If you're building out something, you can take these concepts from these videos, apply them to your project, you know, or you could start your own React application from scratch, NPX Create React App. What we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be adding this to an existing application, and we're going to be using an API that we've built in this series as well. So let's take a moment to talk about how we can get these applications up and running so that you can join along if you're just jumping into the series. And if you've been following along since the beginning, great, you should be good to go. So feel free to fast forward through this part but you don't want to fast forward through this very first thing I want to mention, which is the last section of the series is in fact sponsored. So I wanted to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor of this video. Are you looking for a file uploader that works well with React? FileStack covers everything from simple file uploading to image transformations. Check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. So now let's take a look at what we're going to need for the next section of these videos. We are going to want an API that will give us customer data. Now the specifics of this customer data doesn't really matter in great detail. As you can see, I was experimenting with this sum and I added some tags and stuff like that. The main thing that we want is to be able to get a customer's property, which is an array of customers, each one of these having a name and an industry. Then what we will do is we will take a look at sales for these individual customers. So this information is coming from MongoDB. Here we are in cloud.mongodb.com and you can see what we have here inside of our collections. We have customers with some customer data. Eventually, we want to put this in some kind of user interface. So if you go over to the Material UI documentation, you can see these templates over here. And one of these is a dashboard, which you can view an example of. It looks a little something like this, which is actually quite fitting for the application we're building. So you can see on here we have a dashboard and then we have the ability to check orders and customers, which currently these links don't do anything. So it's really just a bare bones template. But what we can do is we can wrap our entire application with this template and I'll show you how to do that step by step. So the next question is, how do you get this API? Well, up on my GitHub, you can go to repositories and then we will look for React Next. And the commit that I'm going to be starting from is actually this React Query install commit with this commit hash. So I'll show you what that might look like. We could take the URL and from the terminal, we would say git clone paste that URL, give this a moment to clone. And then if you want to start from that exact commit hash, you can just say git checkout 4993C10, first making sure that you are actually in the correct directory. So now you should be able to check that out and you'll be at the exact point in time of this video. So now when you open this, you should be able to see where the connection string for the database is, which you will find under lib mongodb. This code is looking for the mongodb URI, so we actually need to create 
a .env .local file. Pasting in a MongoDB connection string, it will look fairly similar to this. You may need to adjust for your exact cluster. Here is the username, followed by a colon, and then the password, followed by the cluster information, which you can find under connect, and then connect your application, Node.js. Here is your cluster information. And then I opted to add the customer's collection here to the connection string as well, so that will be the default. So that is the structure for a MongoDB connection string. So pretty much set up a cluster in MongoDB, clone the repo, and add your connection string. Then you should be able to open a terminal and say npm install next. Once that's done, you should now be able to say npm run dev. Here it will give you the URL, which you can visit, and you can go over to the customers page to see a list of your customers. Now what I wanna do is figure out how can we get this information into a really cool looking template like this. That's going to be the focus of the next video. So there's a few basic things that I wanna talk about in this video first. Specifically, let's talk about how we can take Material UI, install it in our React JS application or a Next.js application, which is actually what we're using, but it's gonna be very similar, and then start using the Material UI components. So you should be able to, from the document documentations, input anything you might be interested in, such as a button, and you'll see examples of that. So we can create a nice looking button like this with simply putting a button component with a variant called contained. So this is all the code, no classes applied. We just have to put that component and then pass some property to it. So slightly different than what you might be used to if you're from CSS classes or just normal classes on the HTML element from Tailwind CSS. But enough rambling, let's go ahead and try this. But first we have to install. So under getting started, you can see the installation. It's going to suggest the qualified packages and we're going to have material and then emotion styled. And one more thing, which is the font, which you can get from font source Roboto. All right, so let's go ahead and take this value and from a new terminal, we will install these packages or you can stop your server if you wish as well. We also need the font, so let's copy that and install. Now we will just add these imports to our entry point. So for a normal React application, that's going to be index.js. Inside of next.js, that is going to be underscore app.tsx. So we will add these imports here. Now to create a button, let's go to a page where we want a button displayed. Let's go into our customers index.tsx. So this is our customers list. And for every one of these customers, we can display a button and this is going to be a capital B. And inside of this button, we can say something like view orders. We'll just leave it plain like that. Now this button is going to be imported. And to do this, we will say import and it'll be a default import called button from at MUI slash material slash button. So the way these are imported is interesting because they're all going to be default imports. However, we will put whatever we want to import after a slash here. You can actually do it the way that you might be used to, which is with a named import. However, this can be up to six times slower. So it's recommended to do the default with the slash followed by whatever you're trying to import here. Now that we have this button imported, we should be able to display it down here as we have. We'll save and take a look at the site. Taking a look, you can see we now have these buttons here. Awesome. And we can style these differently using a property. So we want to use the variant property and I'm going to use contained. I like the way that looks. So we'll say variant and we should get a suggestion here, variant with control space there. If it doesn't show up automatically, and then I'll say contained. Now, this is what our site looks like. Not too bad. Another change I wanted to make for the React Query DevTools is to default them to closed. So initial is open is false, or you could just remove the React Query DevTools altogether. Another display change that I think might be interesting is to get rid of this ID, but still make that content available as this is an application I'm intending to use for myself. You know, generally you're not going to make the ID for the database displayed inside of an application. However, if this is really an application for me to keep track of my customers and my orders, then I think that's fine. You know, if I wanna go check that data in the database, it'd be nice to have that information on the page. So it really just depends on what the application is. But what we could do is we could take that ID and actually hide it in a tooltip. 
So instead of just displaying it, you actually have to hover over some icon. So what we'll do is in the next video, we will talk about tooltips and icons, and then we'll take a look at putting it inside of a page like this. This is going to take some time, you know, we're not just going to be able to import this and have everything automatically show up perfect, but we should be able to get a basic page going without too much effort. So thank you so much for watching episode one of Material UI. We're pretty deep in a series, so lots of extra information from throughout this series that might be nice to know, but hopefully I gave you enough to follow along and enjoy this content. Up next, we got tool tips and icons, and then hopefully we will get to displaying it in a page. Thank you again. Please be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.